Hello my chickens! In this video we will be talking about exponential functions, especially about the types of exponential functions when the exponent is a product, like 12 times t, and when the exponent is a fraction, like t over 12. For many of you this is a major point of confusion and SAT started to include these questions in every test, sometimes several times. Hopefully after watching this video you will be confused no more. My name is Kanti Severson. I'm the inventor of the Severson Method. It's a scientifically proven way to learn anything fast, especially the silly things like product exponents and fractional exponents. I also run a wonderful membership website. It's called SAT Verbal, where you can get direct help from me. There is a lot of content. The content is live and we also have pre-recorded lectures and I teach live lessons, I teach three times a week, where you can ask me questions directly, but you can also send me questions and ask Katya, and I promise to respond to your questions within 48 hours or less with a video or an audio response. Also, for many of you, the content that we have on the membership website can feel kind of overwhelming. There's a lot of videos, there's a lot of exercises to complete. How do you navigate this? Well, here's the solution. As soon as you join, you will be getting a mentor assigned to you. That mentor will reach out, ask you about your weaknesses and your challenges, and then suggest certain exercises, certain video lectures to watch, live lessons to attend, and we will help you raise your score. Let's talk about exponential functions, shall we? So many of you are familiar with a basic exponential function. It looks like this. Y equals A, which is your initial value, B, which is your rate, and if B is greater than 1, then it's growth, and if B is less than 1, then it's decay, and then there is T, which is your time. To many of you, this is clear. However, what creates confusion is which investment is going to be more favorable. Will this investment bring your more money or that one? Q is represents the number of quarters. The biggest thing you could do for yourself is learn how to read these two equations and know the difference. If you said that the first equation is going to bring your more money, you are 100% correct. And here is why. Here we have 2,000. And we are multiplying it by 12. We are growing it by 12% because we have 1.12. And the power we're raising it to is 4Q. Do you see how it says 4 times Q? I did it on purpose because I want you to remember that the way I want you to perceive this is 4 times per quarter. That means this growth happens four times a quarter. That means this growth happens a lot. It happens every month. Your $2,000 goes grows very, very quickly. Let's go over to the next example right here. Here we still have $2,000. We're still increasing the $2,000 by 12%. This line, you can think of it as every. Every four quarters, your money goes up by 12%. How many quarters are in a year? Four. So basically what this says is that your money grows by four, uh, by 12% every year. What is more frequent? Four times a quarter or every month or every year? Of course, every month is more frequent. But the key here is to learn that when your exponent is a product, let's say it's four times Q, four times a quarter versus Q over four, every four quarters. I know this could be a little bit confusing for you now, but let's, talk, let's try a few examples. The main skill with these types of questions is to learn how to tell the story of a function. Here in question 13, we have P of t, there's some kind of a function of time, and it goes like this, 60 times 3 to the power of t over 2. t is in days, t represents days, 
I don't want to know anything else about the function just yet. I'm not going to read the word problem. I just want to know the T's and days. And I'm going to try my best to tell the story of this function. So there's 60 of something, because 60 is my A, it's my initial amount. Then my rate is three, that means I am tripling it. So I take 60, I triple it, but how often do I triple it? Remember, there's a fraction. So anytime there's a fraction in the exponent, I'm going to say the word every. Every, then I'm going to go into the denominator, two days. So something gets tripled every two days. Now, let's take a look at the question. Based on the function, which of the following statements is true? Well, let's, let's just run through this test. Predict the number of organisms in the dish triples every two days. Bingo, that's the right answer. Let's try another one, shall we? This is problem number 28 from the official SAT test three. Here, they're giving you a word problem and they're asking you to come up with an exponential function based on the word problem. For many of you, it's going to be pretty easy to eliminate two of the answer choices, but only if you are telling the story of the function, you're going to decide on your final answer. So pause the video, try it out by yourselves, and get back to me. So here, looking at the answer choices, your initial amount is going to remain the same. It's going to be 50,000, and that initial amount represents the population. Now, the rate. What is going to be your rate? Is, going to be, is it going to be 0.1 or is it going to be 0.9? Your rate comes from one plus or minus percent increase or percent change in decimals. So what is our percent change here? 10%. What's 10% in decimals? 0.1. So your B is going to be 0.9, not 0.1. So which eliminates immediately A and B. But is it going to be 20 times T, or is it going to be T over 20? Let's try to sound out C. 50, uh, 50,000 people decrease 10 per, uh, by 10%, 20 times, what is T in? T is in years, 20 times a year. Is that exactly what's happening? Do you see how it is? 20 times T, 20 times a year. Is that, is that what's happening based on the word problem? No, 10% gets decreased every 20 years. So the right answer is D. Whenever there is a line, whenever there's a fraction in the exponent, we think of that fractional line as every. Every, and then we go into the denominator, 20, and then back in the numerator, years. Every 20 years. So the right answer here is going to be D. So together, let's try problem number 15. What do you guys think? Read the word problem, decide on your initial value, and then, of course, decide on your exponent. Your initial value is 200, which eliminates A and B, because there you have your initial value as 150. So 200, and then we have a term half-life. Half-life means we are losing 50%, so it's going to be 1 minus 0.5, or 1 half. Now let's tell the story of the function. Let's take a look at C. Your T is in years. So 150 times T means it happens 150 times a year. Or does it happen every 150 years? What's the right answer here? It says that half-life of a certain substance in the aquatic environment is about 150 years. That means every 150 years, it reduces by 50%. The right answer here is D. I hope this video really helped you guys. Please remember, if in your exponent it says it's a product, think of it as times. If it says 3y and y is in years, that means it's three times a year. And if it says y over three, Think of that line, that fraction line, as every, every three years. Hope this really helped you guys untangle this uh, compounding more than once problems on the SAT's math section. Um, just a warning, this, this concept is a little bit advanced, so I hope you um, arrived at it with a basic knowledge of exponential functions 
and uh, we're able to learn from it. Don't forget, every month we choose one lucky person to get a free membership in SAT Verbal for a full month. So make sure you leave comments below this video and uh, let me know if you liked it.